I am very pleased that in addition to Sama, we have with us this morning Carsten Fink, who is our Chief Economist, and who will be able to uh, answer in a much more erudite manner than I all of your questions. We are launching today the uh, World Intellectual Property uh, Indicators for, uh, well, the issue of 2010. It concerns principally 2008. Uh, it's a very full publication, right, uh, with a vast amount of detail. And just let me give you a couple of indications of uh, what's in it. As I said, it concerns, in principle, 2008, because that is the data collection process. However, there is a special section which deals in a preliminary and not a definitive manner with 2009. What we notice in 2008 is uh, that, of course, if you recall, 2008 was the year in which the financial crisis broke, if you like, uh, in the last quarter, I think around about October of 2008. What we see uh, is that the slowdown of, in IP applications commenced. Uh, there were around the globe in 2008 1.9 million patent applications. 3.3 million trademark applications and 660,000 industrial design applications. So compared to the preceding year, that was rather static indeed, a small decline in the number of trademark applications. Trademarks being something of a leading indicator uh, as to economic health. Um, what we see in the following year, in 2009, insofar as we, uh, as we have the preliminary indications, is that there has been a slowdown in research and development, and Carsten can talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the data also indicates that patent filings dropped in most offices around the world in 2009, with the notable exception of China where uh, they grew by 8.5% in China. And when you take it all together, uh, China saved the world from dropping in the total, its total number of uh, patent applications. Indeed, that number, the total number of patent applications in 2009 rose by a small margin, 2.9%. It was the smallest rise, increase, in global patent applications since the dot-com crisis in 2002. Um, trademark applications also dropped in 2008 by a small mark, uh, margin, as I've said. Uh, and what we see in 2009 is that they dropped considerably, especially international trademark applications. In the Madrid system, they dropped by about 12%. Uh, and as far as the preliminary indications for 2010 are concerned, we see uh, for trademarks in the international applications, because that's all we can measure for the moment, that they ha have gone up by about 11%, which takes them back to 2008 level. Uh, for patents, international patent applications, we are projecting an increase in 2010 of roughly 2.8%, but that is still not at the level of 2008. It's still slightly below the level of 2008. So perhaps I will stop my comments there Carsten, would you like to make some comments, maybe? Thank you, uh, Director General. Maybe just one or two additional observations uh, um, on uh, the report. Uh, as the Director General mentioned, uh, for the first time uh, we introduced uh, an analytical chapter in this report, so not only to present uh, the latest uh, numbers, the latest statistics uh, that we collect, uh, but also um, to provide uh, analysis, uh, putting some of the data into context. Uh, and the topic that we chose for this year's World Intellectual Property Indicators is uh, the impact uh, of uh, the economic uh, crisis, uh, which is really 
um, still on the minds of policymakers. Um, maybe just uh, a few observations uh, as uh, they come out of uh, the analytical discussion. Uh, I think one um, thing became quite clear when we um, started to look at the, the most recent data is that in many ways uh, what we have seen in 2008 and 2009 conforms to the expectations uh, that you know, we had going into this and especially the expectations that were formed based on previous episodes uh, of economic uh, downturns. Uh, so I think the message here is that, you know, certainly this crisis was different as far as, you know, the depth of the downturn uh, was concerned, uh, but not necessarily as far as qualitative, as far as its qualitative impact uh, was concerned. Um, one of the things that we have learned from um, previous episodes uh, of um, economic uh, recessions was that, you know, trademark filings um, are more exposed uh, to the business cycle uh, than patent filings. Uh, trademark filings indeed serve as a lead indicator um, of economic uh, downturns, uh, but they also rebound uh, more quickly. And you know, this is something that uh, we have seen um, in this crisis as well. You know, it intuitively relates to the fact that during um, the crisis, uh, fewer firms are being formed, uh, fewer products are being launched, and. Uh, that uh, immediately um, leaves a mark uh, on trademark filings. Uh, as far as the impact on patents is concerned, the impact on patents is initially more muted, um, but it is longer lasting. And you know that has to do with uh, the multi-year nature of many of the R&D projects uh, that uh, companies are, are undertaking. Maybe two observations that I think you know are quite interesting about uh, this crisis. Uh, we. Uh, we're able um, to gather um, original data on research and development uh, expenditure that largely comes from the um, reports uh, that companies file to, uh, publicly listed companies file to um, the Security Ex and Exchange Commission in the United States. Uh, these are not only U.S. companies, but uh, these are um, multinational companies from um, around the world. And what we saw there is similar to what we find in the case of patents, that in 2008 there was a slowdown in R&D expenditure, and at least you know, based on the sample of publicly listed companies, we find that in 2009 there was a drop in R&D expenditure. What is interesting, though, is that R&D expenditure fell by less than company revenues. And that means that R&D intensity actually increased uh, during the crisis. Uh, and you know that is very much a reflection of the recognition of companies uh, to keep on innovating um, so as to emerge uh, even stronger um, uh, once the crisis uh, is passed. I think the second observation that I would make is that you know, in line with uh, the uh, projections by the International Monetary Fund, um, w which predicts uh, that there will be faster growth in emerging and developing countries uh, um, after the crisis, uh, we would also expect uh, that to be reflected uh, in um, IP data. And in fact, that is already something that we see both in national filings as well as in filings uh, under um, the WIPO administered treaties, the Patent Corporation Treaty, and uh, the Madrid um, Treaty. And I think, you know, there is a broader phen phenomenon behind it, which you know is very much that we see a ge geographic shift in um, in innovative activities, with uh, new players, uh, especially in in Asia, um, gaining uh, in relative importance. You know, this is a trend. You know that uh, certainly started uh, before this crisis, uh, but you know this is something that uh, we predict uh, will uh, continue, and uh, you know that um, you know I think very much uh, has implications on you know the global competitive environment, but I think it also has implications on you know the governance uh, of uh, the intellectual property system.